Cool. So let's walk you on down the hall. Come on down. We're going this way. We'll take a, a short detour, show you the camera room. This is the camera studio. And right now it's set up for a Zoom meeting, another Zoom meeting. A different Zoom meeting. And sometimes this room is actually set up as a brass isolation room for this project. Chuck has uh, been brilliant about using every resource we have here because we want to keep all of the musicians spread out and safely distanced. And we figured the only way to get four trumpets and four trombones in the same session was to isolate the four trombones in this large room and isolate the trumpets in the room where I'm going to take you in a minute. All right. So Chuck has really been uh, working overtime to find new creative ways to allow the jazz orchestra to still reach an audience. There you go. Pretty cool. We're working on it. So uh, what, what happens in there? What's that? This here is a voiceover, radio production, and looping facility. Now, when you want to get loopy? Yeah, when you want to get loopy. In the movie business, when you have uh, movies that have been shot on location, and there's often noise that you're dealing with, many times the actors have to re-record their dialogue. So we have the capability of putting picture in here with the talent in front of the, that screen, in front of a microphone, and them reenacting their actual dialogue and syncing it back to their original performance. It's kind of a fun process. We had Helen Mirren in not too long ago. It was quite exciting. Yeah, imagine. Wow. Very cool. And further down the hall, I shouldn't show you my library, but this is uh, mm, lots of material that goes back decades. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, over here we have a video studio. This is where Chris actually does his videography editing. And uh, it's conveniently located just across the, the hall from the music control room. And the entire plant is actually networked together so that we can share picture across the hall, share audio from across the hall over here. Uh, we try to make it all work together. And I hear dulcet tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, from, so what's all this old stuff over here? Oh, we don't point that out. That shows people how old I am. Uh -huh. I've collected old audio from my high school days. I still have this. Yeah? I do. <laughs> well, down there on that third shelf is uh, a real relic, which is an eight-track recorder. Ooh. <laughs> wow, you are old. Well, believe it or not, I still get people who say, I've got this eight-track recording. Uh, is there any way for me to get that onto a CD? And yeah, we do that. It's like, okay. okay. What's this over here? Yeah, oh, that? we're not going to point that out. Are uh, we? Oh. You can talk about that if you'd like. <laughs> well, I just know it's a Grammy. And how many Grammy winners are there in Reno, Nevada? I don't know. I, I know there's one. <laughs> so I know there's one. And I'm looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were very fortunate one year to uh, pull in a Grammy with one of our clients. And uh, it was an exciting turn of events. And uh, it, I'm proud to have that hanging on the wall. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So let's get the business in okay. here. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look. So this is the heart and soul of every music project. Well, the soul comes from the other side of the glass. We, we try to put more heart in it here. You can see that we have uh, musicians uh, under glass, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We um, have been able to put them on the other side of that glass in a, an isolated room where if we choose to, we can turn up the sound in here. And... say 
say, boy, I sure like to be able to hear just the drums. They're all still playing, but I just have isolated those drums. And vice versa, just the piano. Now we hear a little bit from across the room from the bass. And if I isolate just the bass player, we're hearing mostly bass player. So that's kind of the fun of the recording studio is that we keep uh, multiple recordings going at the same time all locked together so that we have full control over the bass and the piano and the drums. And uh, it just makes the, the process of putting music all together a little easier on the engineering side. So let's listen to a little bit, and maybe you could show them about uh, reverb or something. Little sure. Extras you might want to slide in there. Let's do this. I'm going to pull up a channel, just a reverb for the piano. What do you say we try and put that piano in a much bigger space? Of course, he's going to stop. Stop playing. Yay! We're giving a, a piano demonstration. Uh, uh, so if you could just keep playing, we'd, we'd uh, have something to play with. So that piano is being recorded just like that, but we have the option of putting him in a great So now he's in a big hall. Now he's in a great big space. And we can vary. Being like in a closet to a much bigger space. And it wouldn't get actually pretty absurd. Let's put him in a cathedral.
Time for another cheers. Are you ready to hoist your glass? Oh, it's happy hour. Time to glass glass hoister. All right. Cheers. Here's some great music. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers. They're looking at us like, how come they're drinking wine? Mm. So I'm going to go in and talk to these gentlemen for a little bit, and Mike's going to set up a little bit. So what we've already recorded, right? And did you have a selection? Um, oh. Surprise, I, surprise. Have, okay. No, we should. And we need something with the brass in it. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Have fun. I go this way, right? Okay. See, let's just see if they let me in. Sometimes they don't. Hey guys. Hey. Oh. Maybe question for a second. Can you come on for a second? So I'll introduce the uh, trio. You know that, that tune you played, what was it called? UMMG, Upper Manhattan Medical Group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to China. Uh -huh. Of course. Uh -huh. So um, they're mad, but uh, this gentleman called in Tunstall on the bass. Say howdy. Hello. And uh, he is our jazz workshop director and uh, just produced a video, a long coming, but we have a video of the two workshops uh, through Zoom. So now we're doing our jazz workshops through Zoom, obviously. Um, any, any parents there that have kids that want to learn about jazz, sign up for the jazz workshop because Dylan does a great job. And you can hear he's a pretty darn good bass player, too. It's, so the other thing is, I noticed, I think, is that there was no arrangement. Somebody just started playing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Angela, you got it going. Yes, sir. And um, you so. just guys just figure it out as you want, right? Yeah. We've been playing together for, I mean, not specifically as this group, but she's been playing for time sure. now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is Angela, Angelo Monroy. And he's our piano player uh, recording Earth, Wind & Fire uh, tunes. And it's really cool to hear. So there's a challenge, is that 
the rhythm section came in here and played the tunes all by themselves without hearing the trumpets, without hearing the saxes or the soloists or the singers, and they had to make it happen. And these guys were gifted enough that it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, it'll sound even better when uh, we throw everything else on top. Yeah. Um, last, I want to introduce Pudge Gervais, David Gervais. Um, and he's our percussionist for the uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire sessions. And while the rhythms, most of the rhythm section was here, David was way over in the video room, all by his lonesome. Not playing drums. And, excuse me? Not playing drums. Not, yes, not playing drums, just percussion, all the congas and the bells and the whistles and yeah. all the fun stuff. And he's going to come back and add a bunch of more percussion uh, to the tunes. And so, and it's just like I said, it's been a real uh, treat to work with everybody here. And um, we're about mm, halfway through the recording. We still have a long ways to go, um, but we're going to play a little bit in a minute uh, of what we've done to date. Um, anything you want to share with the our Zoom audience? Oh no, I got a question for you all. Can you? Is there a well? What is the difference between playing live and playing in a studio? I mean, what are the challenges? Are you guys have to say? Um, kind of depends on what. I guess it, with the Earth, Wind, and Fire stuff, the different challenge was I was a little bit more. I was improvising a bit less with some of like the material for me as a percussionist. Mm -hmm. um, live, I might take more risks and try something new every show, but this time I had it to map it out pretty well because I wanted to do what I want and say what I want with that one take. Um, in a situation like this, it takes a little bit to like lock in when you're not actually hearing people just right next to you. But I feel like the opposite, is the, the, the other side of that is I, I get to kind of, since I'm isolated, I get to kind of go for it a little more. Whereas in a small club, I, I have to tame my volume down. Mm -hmm. When we record like our video sessions or albums or stuff, I feel like I can dig in a little more which can be fun. Mm -hmm. So it's different challenges for different situations, but it's been good to spend a lot more time in the studio than I have been live performing, obviously. Cool. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Angelo, any thoughts? Um, you know, I, I think the, for me, the biggest difference is just, uh, just overall sound. Uh, I think when you're playing live, there's like this whole, you know, the, there's people's bodies in a room that are like absorbing the sound and that's sort of affecting how you hear yourself. So, um, here it's uh, there's a lot more attention, like I'm just saying, like there's a like, greater attention to detail when you're recording in a studio uh, versus you know sort of this sort of uh, spontaneity that you can sort of reach in a live audience. But I think I welcome both. I think both are valuable, and um, it's been good to do so much here actually during the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why we're doing this recording project to give our guys something to do, and um, it's. I'm just thrilled at how it's coming out so far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about uh, Dylan playing live and playing in the studio? Uh, for me, uh, audience makes a big difference. Like, uh, especially with certain kinds of music, like more improvisational music. I feel like having the audience it gives you a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. That in the studio, it's it's hard to feel like. I mean, part of it is you if you're in the studio, you want to sort of you know, keep it a little more contained just because of the nature of like listening to music. You maybe have less tolerance for like extremely long things, mm -hmm. but you know, so it's, I feel like it's a little bit harder to get in the zone with, with a lot of improvisation because I feel like the audience gives me a lot of my ideas when I'm in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes a big difference, but also just, you know, I don't really like headphones and, you know, having something on my head and I like being able to feel the bass drum, you know, I mean, sometimes in a live setting, the, the bass drum in my ear is, is too much, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I can testify to that. <laughs> but, you know, in, in, in this situation, when you got nothing, like the only way I can hear the drums is if I have the headphones on, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's a challenge in a, in a certain way. I mean, I feel like just getting, yeah, like Pudge said, kind of locking in with with uh, with that kind of situation where you don't have that physical vibration of the instruments. 
I mean, you know, I feel, you know, it's nice that at least the piano is in here. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if we were all separated, I would, that would be even harder, you know, but, um, but this, this setup is pretty good because it's still small. I can still see pretty yeah, good. Sometimes you can't see and that's, that's, you know, that makes it even harder. Mm -hmm. So um, just before I forget, uh, this Friday at the Gazette Journal, you can learn more about Angelo and Pudge and more about our recording session in, in my article that's coming in on Friday. And um, so if you're interested, give that a read. Um, and again, uh, Dylan is starting the jazz workshop this Saturday? Yep. This Saturday. Saturday. Wow. Uh, and it's all Zoom, and it was all Zoom last year. Well, no, we have one. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. We had one. We had one, one. the very last day before uh -huh. things shut down. <laughs> well, so we're going to um, play a little bit of a tune that we've recorded most of. And then when we do that, I'll ask you guys to, to play a little bit more. Great. That's cool. cool. Great. All right. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. All righty. Well, let's head back. Hey, Dylan, could you shut that door? Yeah. Locked it again. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, where's my wine? Hey, gang. Well, hi, Chuck. <laughs> Lee and I have just been sitting in here drinking. Yeah. All, the, all the wine sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, to audience, Mike's going to play a bit of a tune. And let's see if we can figure out what tune that is. Let's see. Uh, there's no singing. There's no yes. solos. Not yet. But you might recognize the tune. And so, this will be a pop quiz to our audience. What tune is this. Shall I crank it a little bit? Well, I guess. It's happy hour. Let's go. <laughs> musicians do what they do and this guy not only has to understand what this score is all about but what it's about for every last player and so he's he's got this knowledge of every one of these instruments that is just an amazing thing and I I love to learn through Chuck about his his background for each one of these instruments because there's a lot to know so Chuck has asked me to kind of isolate some things and uh, see what you hear. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to I had to leave the Zoom meeting on my phone because I heard voices coming out of my pocket. So. Oh, you are cut off. You're done, Chuck. <laughs> so I, instantly, my ear is drawn to those trumpets. Listen to what these trumpets are doing all by themselves. <laughs> And let's listen to what the the trombones are doing that same passage. <laughs> Saxophones. Let's see if I can turn on the saxophones all by themselves. There's a flute in there too. So <laughs> Yay. So it's kind of fun. Let's can we hear a little bit just in the rhythm section? Yeah, let's listen. I'll turn off all the saxes 
And oh, by the way, has anybody guessed on the tune? Does anybody know what this tune is? We can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll find out later. Hey, John, do you know? Lee, John's played it, so. Lee, you have to say, ooh, ooh. What, what was that, Mike? One more time? What's the answer, John? What was the question? I just got back. Sorry. Oh, oh what's the tune we've been listening to? That's Get Away. One of my yes, favorites. It is. it is indeed. I bet I better know the answer to that. You get a free <laughs> You get a free CD for that answer. Oh, thank goodness. I can't wait. So now we're going to listen just to the rhythm section. <laughs> where I put the engineer's disclaimer in. What you're hearing are the raw recordings of every last instrument. One of the joys in my life is I get to go into every one of those instruments and just make it the best recording I can possibly make that particular sound. And when it all comes together, hopefully we've made it really tight and really high quality. So the final recording really speaks well. And Mike is excellent at that. Oh, and I can't wait to work with singers since I, I made my living as a singer for years and years. It's going to be really fun working with the singers. Uh, so, uh, John, I don't know if anybody's had any questions in the chat or does anybody in the audience have questions about what they're saying or they want to learn more about? No questions in the chat yet, but let's take this moment to encourage anybody. If you have any questions for Mike about how the studio works or general questions about the music we're making or just any, anything really, or some comments, feel free to put them in the chat there and then we can relay a little bit of a Q&A here at the end. Um, so now would be a great time to give us your questions. We got some, some great minds in the room. Let's pick their brain. Sure, okay. Um, do you want to hear a little bit more of this or get the guys to play some more? I'd say a lot of music. Okay, so uh, while you gather your thoughts and questions, we're going to ask the uh, trio to play. And um, after that tune stops, maybe there'll be some questions to ask. So uh, here, I learned a trick. <laughs> if you push this button, see this button right here? You can talk to the guys. And I'm going to say, you guys ready? No, they can't hear you yet. I have to turn oh. that microphone on. Oh. Okay, now they can hear you. Now, oh, okay. okay. Are you guys ready for uh, a tune? There we go. Thank 
So, uh, John, any chat questions come up? We've got a shy crowd. No questions for you guys, but I could see many faces enjoying the performance, and I got the sense everyone really enjoyed the tour. So, sorry, no questions, but I think that means you guys knocked it out of the park. Oh, um, Lee, you want to talk about that? This is Lee Cook, our program development uh, uh, director. Hi, gang. Uh, first and foremost, I want to let you know how much we miss you. We miss seeing you. You miss seeing us. We hear from you all the time, and I just want to let you know you're not you're not alone at your homes because we certainly look forward to the time that we can get together again. 
Our governor has just told us that we can increase our group size to 250 people. So we will gingerly take a look at that as our creative juices come together to see what we can do to get back together, hopefully for the holidays. But in the meantime, I think it's important for all of us to reflect back to the summer that never happened. And as you can imagine, not only the Reno Jazz Orchestra, but arts and culture groups around the world have sincerely lost quite a bit of revenue to keep arts alive. Here with the Reno Jazz Orchestra in our hearts is our ability to get out into the schools and to mentor the kids so they can grow up to be just like Chuck and Mike and the fine gentleman who played for you today. So this project is actually just a spin-off of one of many projects that we were forced to do. And quite frankly, I think it's been an amazing experience for all of us. We have learned to reinvent ourselves to try to decide how else can we share the passion, the music, and the talent of what we have with the Reno Jazz Orchestra and with our students to, to people like you and for, for our fans, of course, throughout Northern Nevada and California. So came this idea to develop Earth, Wind, and Fire, of course, because we hope to share that with you this summer, but couldn't, but we will again. But in the meantime, this particular album and this project is not just an album. It has many legs. First and foremost, it's keeping these guys paid so they can continue their education and their performances to keep our band happy and involved. Second of all, is to develop a fundraising project that allows us to put monies back into our coffers. We've lost over $30,000, $40,000 in revenue and need to actually get the money back so we can get back to those kids. To ante up for education. And that is another purpose of this particular project. The third project, of course, is marketing. Because when we do get back, we were able to get out into the world. We'll want to use this album to actually entice our press to get out there and to get excited about us, that the show will go on, the show is going on when the time is right. And last, of course, and not least, is to have a promotional tool to get corporate sponsors involved to let them know what great music we have. And people like you that just might want us in your backyard when the time is right, or an anniversary party or uh, maybe a 60, I'm um, working on you, Chuck, or a <laughs> birthday party that we yeah, had yeah. last week, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. All right. Whatever that was, that was yeah. That's right. So here within our organization, your support is, is heartfelt. Every penny counts. And you can learn all about the different levels to get involved in this project, from getting your name on the album, to coming to a studio event, to having a private dinner kickoff for the actual album, and of course, our season to come. Please go to our website at renojazzorchestra.org and you'll take a look at the support section. And in there, you'll learn all, of, all about the Earth, Wind, and Fire Anti-F Education Program. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the music. Come back and see us again, and we hope to see you soon. God bless you. Well said, Lee. <laughs> And so, Chuck, um, Chuck, we yeah. did have just one question for Mike, and I'm wondering the same thing. Dan wants to know, uh, was this building originally designed and built as a recording studio, or was it repurposed? And, and do you know anything about so, who, who built and designed it? The building itself was um, an old carpet warehouse, but it fit the bill of exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for a building just exactly this size, that we didn't have to gut and start over with. It was just a shell. And working with Don Clark, our architect, we actually, he and I worked together to configure the building on the inside because studios are actually buildings built within a studio, within the building. So every one of these rooms is actually a standalone room that is built to not touch another room. We want to isolate the sound as much as we possibly can. So this room doesn't join with that room, actually. It's a separate set of studs. So the configuration of the building within the building was all done from scratch, working with Don Clark, the architect. And I think he did a pretty good job of uh, taking into consideration some of my concerns. I told him originally we want the entire back of the building to be one big music studio because that's where my heart is. He talked me down a little bit. He says, what's the largest group you could ever record in here in Reno, Nevada? I said, the Reno, Reno Philharmonic? 
And he says, well, how many times would you get the Reno Philharmonic to sit in your studio? I said, probably not very often. So we pared it down a little bit. And uh, it's always been my wish to have a little bit bigger so we can get the full Reno Jazz Orchestra in all at the same time. But Chuck has found a way to stretch us a little bit to where we can get more than what we originally anticipated into this building. Yeah, we tried it once several years ago and it was a little too cozy. A little too cozy for the whole big band in that room. Uh -huh. Well, it's a beautiful space and I can't wait to get back in there. I know I'll be back there in under a week to do the rest of the brass. And yeah. uh, I can say it's, it's just a wonderful space and it's worked really well to do the different musicians in different rooms. So we're all very impressed with, with your abilities and, and really appreciate the work you've done in this project. Well, we are happiest when we're dealing with real musicians in this space because uh, we are very fortunate to have the caliber of musicians in Northern Nevada that we have. And uh, it has made my life just so much happier. <laughs> so as we wrap this up, um, I think we should have one more toast. Oh. Um, Excuse me. Uh, to Mike and Kathy. <laughs> and to the Reno Jazz Orchestra. And the trio. And the trio, yeah. Uh -huh. And to all of you, thanks for joining us. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to wind up with the trio playing, and you're welcome to stick around as, as, as long as you would like. <clears throat> Before I turn it back over to the trio, I do want to thank, um, so as Mike said, we've been gifted with musicians in town, and as folks like me were getting older, we were worried, where's the next generation? Well, the next generation you're looking at right out there, and it is such a treat to hear um, this next generation create music, and um, so I'm thrilled. Okay, guys, you're on. Check on. <laughs>
Our second happy hour, and the third one will be honored on on the way in about a month. So glad you could join us. Uh, we're going to invite the band to have a little light with us. They've been working pretty hard this afternoon. So see you all till next time. Thank you and good night. <laughs> oh, oh, and there's Catherine. Our, our now sister. we can see Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, over and out. Thanks so much, you guys. That was great. Thanks, guys. Bye. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you soon.